Dr. Carson, welcome back to Philadelphia. Oh, it's good to be back with you. Thanks. What are you going to be doing today? Uh, well, we're going to be uh, visiting an, a house, homeless uh, environment that concentrates on people with uh, addictions, particularly opioid addictions. Now, you are, uh, you know, we know that the president, one of the grand plans, Dr. Ben, is charging each department of government, the cabinet, if you will, to really be doing things uh, focused in like a laser on the opiate crisis. So at, you are a critical guy, of course, given your expertise and your department. What's the big plan for you? What is it that HUD is doing around this? Well, uh, we're, we're working with, with all the other agencies uh, and the uh, multi-agency council. But uh, obviously, we are working with our Envision centers. I don't know if you've heard about them or not, um, that bring the resources of the community under the same roof as the need. Mm-hmm. And that includes the health needs, uh, including, uh, you know, getting the kind of counseling and hooking people up with the programs, uh, drug testing, things of that nature as well. But, uh, you know, the president declared this a national health emergency. That provides the ability of governors now to reallocate resources, uh, both uh, in terms of human capital and in terms of uh, monetary resources, to direct it toward this fight. Because I don't think most people recognize how severe this crisis is. But if you talk to a CEO of a manufacturing company, they'll tell you how hard it is uh, to get people who can pass a drug screen. And uh, this is this is not only in this area, this is really throughout the country, although it is significant here in Philadelphia, which has like the fourth highest death rate from opioid addiction. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you've done a tour before, but when you hear of Kensington, there's something alleged about the Kensington heroin supply that they say people are drawn all up and down the East Coast. And sadly, Bucks County, Dr. Ben, which is more middle class to affluent, is where a lot of these people are coming from. They get into this in various ways, uh, maybe over-prescribing at one point, and they end up in places like Kensington. Yeah, you know, there's a, uh, a website called crisisnextdoor.com uh, uh, that the administration sponsors where people can actually go on to that and tell their story. There are a lot of stories on there, which shows you how this cuts across every demographic in our society and that you're not alone. And people need to understand that you know, it doesn't mean that they're a bad person because they've become addicted. It's so easy to happen. It's ridiculously easy. But it's very difficult to overcome without the appropriate resources and the community. As one of the ultimate doctors that we have respect for, the miracles you were able to run, uh, there, there's a concern that I have here, because we talk about this a lot, uh, Dr. Ben, here, because of Philadelphia, Bucks County, and others, and that is several stories just in the last couple of days that there is a crackdown now, so much so that doctors are chilled from people that legitimately get relief for chronic pain. And then the New York Times front page today talks about some of the concerns with Medicaid and some of the proposals in the Trump administration concerned about people that may have need of these. Do you have any sense of that? Have you delved into any of those things? Uh, Yeah. Uh, we're definitely looking at the fact that traditionally, uh, you know, we tend to create to treat the victims more like criminals, and some of the real criminals, like the drug dealers and the people who don't care, more like victims. Uh, obviously, we are looking to alter that perception and recognize that, you know, the people are actually our resources. And, uh, you know, I can't emphasize enough what happens to your brain when you become opioid addicted. And those changes are very difficult to reverse. They don't reverse in weeks or months. It usually takes about 18 months. So in traditional programs, you bring people in, you clean them up, you put a nice suit and tie on them, send them out in the street, and they become a victim once again because they really have not fully recovered. Mm -hmm. Well, let me ask you about that. Uh, I think during various campaigns or whatever, you haven't been opposed to the death penalty. I support if you have a doctor, a pill mill or somebody where we could actually trace it that results in death 
and they knew what they were doing. They made a lot of money off this. I think the president and the things that we've heard is correct, and it's federal law, I believe, right now. In some cases, you can do this. I think that should be done if somebody causes the death of someone else directly through this. Well, you know, it is it is a heinous crime if you know what you're doing and you're still promoting, you know, the use of these dangerous substances. There's no question about that. And I think we ought to uh, consider all the means we have necessary to prevent that from happening again. Absolutely. What else, uh, Dr. Ben, is going to be the big initiative for you at HUD? What is it that you're most interested in now that you've been there about a year? And, you know, yes. it's a massive group with a lot of money and a massive amount of things going on. What's the big thing for Dr. Carson? Well, the big thing is really to focus on people more than on buildings. And how do we develop people and, uh, and get them to move up the ladder of opportunity in this country? And I think if, if we begin to focus all of our programs and policies on that, uh, we as a country will do much better because we'll have a lot more people in the driver's seat. That's very critical because if, if you continue to amass a, a large number of people who require services and who require taxpayer money, uh, eventually, you know, you're overwhelmed. And that's what's happened traditionally in other countries. And even you look at us right now, we've got a $21 trillion national debt. By the year 2048, every penny our government takes in will be used to service the debt. There won't be money for any program. So the people who are complaining about cuts in programs, they need to start thinking about what happens if we don't deal with this now. Exactly. Well, your life story is uh, uniquely targeted toward this. So i um, very glad things are going well for you. Enjoy Philadelphia today, and thanks for the time, Dr. Ben Carson. I shall. Always good to be with you. Thanks.